All right, so we assembled and installed my fourth cell in series. You can see we have uh, basically 400 millivolts spanned across those cells, about 100 millivolts per cell in an idle state. <clears throat> I have flipped the primary input polarity and reduced duty pulse to 33% because that allows us to create the pulse during the input pulse off time. And just on that single cell, we get 30 volts and the cells just blow up. But we're consuming only 4.2 amps instead of nine. I mean, uh, 100 volts for four tubes at 4.8 amps input, not bad said previously that you know wherever we are voltage wise during the pulse on time we are just behind it reaching that same voltage level with these pulses being created during the pulse off time you know cutting our amp usage in half it's just like an inverse operation of it it's like once we get to 200 volts we'll be able to get to 150 volts at the cell using this method saving massive amounts of amperage. You'll see that waveform here. We have a expanding waveform during the pulse off time. If we reverse that primary input, the pulse will then be generated during the on time, that yellow pulse right there. But that allows us to get higher voltage. By cranking up the pulse width, we're able to get maximum voltage 85 is about as high as I like to go, although 90 you can push it. We can achieve 120 volts at the cell per four cells and we consume 8.5 amps, but we're jumping and we are producing, no doubt. For reference, one end of that bifiler secondary on here measures in at 222 millihenries. Just yes, in case we care about capacitance. The resistance about 467 ohms. Also again here, I want to point out that this is my output to my cell. I know for a fact this is a positive output. So we currently have the output reversed because we're getting positive on this terminal here. We're getting negative on this terminal, whereas we'd normally get positive. This is designed to have current flow respectively that way. Our diode here is in fact in reverse position. As you can see the indication, current flow is supposed to be going that way. Okay, that's how I kind of have this whole thing set up. So that being the case, this is on the negative end. Polarity is respective to that. Let me switch it around. As you can see this diode is just looped the diode on the negative terminal what would be here traditionally this diode is now there with current actually opposite here we'll probably have to switch it I'm getting sidetracked here switching all around gets me in that kind of waveform diode gets a lot hotter I got that diode reversed now getting reverse polarity, you gotta switch my outputs. I love my safety ground. One of the best things I implemented here. You have gotta be shitting me. Hold the flippin' phone here. All I did to my configuration, aside from adding this really cool little heat sink here, I'm still alive too, dummy. I need to turn this off. I took my primary and I made it a bifiler. That's it. Same configuration here. We have, uh, just so we know our diode orientation here, we'll know it's like that here. This is on the quote negative end of this whole thing, and the polarity is respective. Now hold up, now hold up, now hold up. Okay, this is one cell, dog. Holy shit. That peaked at 40 volts on one cell. Bro. What? 
this is insane. If we can accomplish 40 volts on one cell, and I know putting them in series basically doubles it, that would be like 240 volts. 240 freaking volts at my cells. Extrapolated across. 240 volts. And I was struggling to break 150. But in these previous videos with the toroid, I was getting 170 volts. Ish. It was pretty impressive. I was just apparently so dead set on trying flyback transformers and winding my own shit. Like literally like the answer has been right here in front of me this whole time. Because I know throughout finding this, you know, my, my episode about the bifiler primary and the amp savings on it. I never applied that here to the toroid. But not only does it do that, it allows for insane voltage. 40 volts at one cell. One cell. One cell, 40 volts. Yo. Hang on. What's going on here when I get to this voltage level? Watch this. Clean. Clean. Dirty. What the feck? The fuck is that, dude? Like... Just like back feed or some kind of crap. Like, do I need to increase my snubber? Oh, fuck, I think I... Shorted my transformer somehow. I hate to say it, I think it's the case. I've replaced diodes and... What I can... But, uh, I get to this certain voltage level here, and then you'll see all the noise on my 12 volt rail and my MOSFET. It's atrocious. It's 11 volts in. Look at this disgusting crap. And it literally just started happening, too. I'm gonna go over a breakdown here really quick of what I got set up here. Uh, toroid transformer, uh, bifiler secondary, bifiler primary. Um, diode on the negative end, let's say, of this configuration with current respective to that flowing in this direction. Traditional current. This is Stan's Revenge. Pulsing at 1.51 kilohertz, 85% duty cycle. I'm going to leave you with this here. On one 6x cell. Just watch this thing. Come on, destruction. I mean, insane gas production. I mean, wow. We're getting 40 volts peak across that single 6XL. So extrapolated across a series of cells that I had, that'd be 240 volts. I have just obliterated my 150 volt mark. Even though, like I said previously, I was getting about 177 volts uh, across the 6X6 cells, kind of smashing the idea that it's my cells that is the limitation of the voltage, etc. Magic toroid here. Let's just take the specs real quick again. Look at that guy. Get a good look at that thing right here. We are, however, at this point now, putting upwards to two amps through that cell. That's pretty significant. Two amps is pretty significant, I'm not gonna lie. However, getting 40 volts on that single six cell, that's 6.6 .6 volts per tube. And buddy, let me tell you, six volts per tube is screaming on these things. Screaming. Like. Rotary VIC equivalent times two. And wow, I mean, if, if we're up at like 240 volts now, if we're able to extrapolate this out properly, 
man, we're going to be making some hydrogen here. And we're pretty much at the same, like what, 300 watts? 28 times 8, yeah, we're sub 300 watts. So, I mean, that's that's a win. It's dub. Can't wait to do more. But I am officially, I believe, out of time for today. Tomorrow we might experiment more with the voltage multiplier circuit that we had a little bit of time to play around with today. Had inconclusive results. <sighs> it's just crazy, dude. Like, just 40 volts on that cell. Just 6 volts per tube is, is on that graph. You know, we're, we're reaching that level of just insane production. And uh, I think we're about ready to uh, hook this up to something that can utilize the gas. And I want to start with uh, my gas resonant chambers. Looking at electron extraction, looking at all this cool stuff. Laser injection, all the fun stuff that is the next, next level. Alright, y'all, I'm out. This is Stan's Revenge.